we're going to break down this sound. In this video, we're going to break down the GUI, the graphical user interface of Serum. Just so as we go through our projects, we understand what each different section is and how we're gonna go about addressing it and using it. Starting from the top and up at the left, first off, we can just see the word Serum. Next to that, we've got Oscillator, FX, Matrix, and Global. Now, these switches change our interface over to different sections, but notice how they only change the top panel. Just next to these, we've got our synth loading and presets. So we've got the option to load just over here and the very old school save icon. If we tap on here, we can see all of our presets and that is where we can load those from. The arrows left to right will scroll through presets. Tapping just here will open up a preset browser, which has everything in categories for you and also shows your rating system. Lots of the advanced features are hidden here inside the menu dropdown and we will visit that in the future as well. And lastly, we've got our master, our overall output, uh, and a meter to show what kind of levels we're getting on that output. The gray section just below is our main synth section. This was the module that changed when we changed through different sections here. Think of this as the synth, the kind of bit that would be mounted into a rack, although completely impossible for the power of what Serum does corner we first got our sub oscillator just below that we have our noise oscillator and then we've got our two main oscillators they're exactly the same just a clone one and two everything on the GUI that has this kind of grayed out square can be switched on or off At a glance to see if something's on by default we have this blue light just next to the two oscillators is our filter section if you think in terms of routing everything over in this section routes over into that filter section order of which things go into it can be adjusted. So we do have things like a direct out available on our noise and our sub. And direct out means it would bypass this filter section. We can also on the filter section choose which oscillators and things are also active. So we've got A, B, noise and sub. We can choose those routings as well. When we switch over to FX, we've got our FX portion that replaces the synth section here. Currently we see nothing in there. With the grayed out square again, we can switch these on. And as we switch them on, the modules load up in here for us. And when there's a certain number, usually over four, we'll get a scroll option here on the right hand side so we can view it like a whole rack. Next over, we have the matrix. The matrix shows our routing and all of our routing is happening with the section at the bottom here. And we'll deep dive into the matrix as we go through the course. Then we have global. This is kind of like looking at the back of the synth and all of the parameters that are going to affect everything else that goes on. For the time being, as we're just getting started with Serum, we don't really need to dive into here too much. One that can be quite useful to note, if you're having issues with your CPU, you can flip this over here and just switch it on to 1x draft. It will be a much lower CPU usage for you. Let's go back to oscillator. So below our synth section, we have our modulation section, really. It's our modulation matrix. Across the top, we've got mod, envelope one, two, and three, LFO one, two, three, and four, velocity and note. We can, at a glance, see what's being viewed in each one. It will be gray, be highlighted in gray, and there's always an arrow pointing down. For example, if we choose FO, LFO, for example, if we choose LFO2, we can see the arrow pointing down switches to that. And we're now viewing what's going on with LFO2 in this LFO section here. If I make an adjustment here and switch back to one, we can see those changes. And that's how this applies across the envelopes and the velocity and note section as well. The modulation section is slightly different. It controls these four macro controls here. A macro control lets us link multiple parameters to one control. We will use those in some of our patches that we build out. The very bottom section gives us a keyboard that we can play on screen. 
We've got our pitch bend range here, along with a pitch bend wheel and a modulation wheel. It can be linked to a keyboard for playing if we if we like. And over on the far right hand side, we've got our portamento. We can change our settings to always by switching on the highlighting. And we've got our portamento amount in time. And then we've got our pitch bend curve options as well. We can change our uh, velocity cap. And we've got our velocity portamento. And then we've got our portamento curve time as well. We can change the curvature of that and make it uh, non-linear and logarithmic instead. And we can also scale it by having scale switched on. The very last thing hidden inside here, there's a tiny little icon just here in the bottom right hand corner. If we click and drag this, we can resize Serum. And this can help if you've got a large display like I have and you want to work on a large screen and really be able to see what you're doing. Or if you're working on say a laptop display and you need to make it smaller, you can also shrink it down to work much smaller for you. Very useful resizing option there. That's a quick breakdown of Serum's GUI. Let's move into our next section. Mm -hmm.